since I made a video about four weeks. So I hope everybody had a great holiday, uh, Christmas and New Year's. I just got to the point where I just didn't feel like making videos, spent more time with the family, hadn't done a lot in the garage over the holidays, now I'm back in the gear. So I wanna give a, a big shout out to everybody that's here. I appreciate you subscribers that are helping me build this channel. I just hit 18,200. To me, that's a milestone. I, I always said, oh, once I get to 10,000, I probably won't do this anymore. Then I said 15,000 and my next goal is 20,000. And uh, I made a lot of promises at 20,000, so you'll find out about that. But let me, let me get to, to the point here. I made a video about Bob Glidden 79 Plymouth Arrow Pro Stock car. Awesome car. You know, Bob went from Ford right into Chrysler and never looked back and never missed a beat and took the 79 World Championship for Pro Stock. So when I made that video, the car is now owned by another guy and he has it's a 314 cubic inch Mopar with a 340X block, W2 heads. Here's a picture of the head that we, you saw in the video before. Pay attention to this, because this is key right here. So I made the video, I showed the car running, and I, and I did a little kind of tribute for the 79 season with Bob Glidden. Well, this video, what I'm doing, <clears throat> kind of one I never planned on doing. And here's how it came about. By the way, keep the owner of Rocky in your prayers. That's all I'm going to say. So Larry Mew is how I always thought his name was pronounced. I, I remember way back in the day when I was going to get Dyno 2000 and I had started looking at engine programs out there and Larry, it's really pronounced Mo. He's French from the Cajun down in Abbeville, Louisiana, and so I, I knew about who he was, but I didn't really know a lot of history of him. So when I made that video, he watched the video, I showed the parts that are on Bob Glidden's car, and you saw the parts, and they're going to be on here too. So he messaged me, he said, hey, Drag Boss, here's the scoop. I got to tell you, I'm a big fan, which made me smile. He goes, I have every one of your episodes already loaded on a disc, it's all saved, so I can refer to anyone that I want anytime I need to. I said, there you go, Larry Moe, that's good. I appreciate that, made me smile, like I said. So, <laughs> flattery will get you everywhere when it comes to racing. And so he said, listen, I have one of Bob Glynn's tunnel rams from that engine program, the Pro Stock Engine program, and I'm like, really? Well, we know that Bob Glidden, I know that he had at least three engines. I know that Ted Spihar built the first one according to Dave Kofel. I have that documented video, won't get into that. The bottom line is he has a tunnel ram. And at one time back in October of 89, he had a 337 cubic inch Glidden Mopar with a tunnel ram that's gonna be in this video. He also had a set of the heads that Bob had done and when he saw this video and saw those heads, he was like, oh my God, another set of the heads. Because he said there was so much work involved with the cylinder head work. Unbelievable amount. Now this is coming from Larry Moe, who's been porting cylinder heads since 1972. So he is one of the early pioneers of cylinder head porting, flow bench work, and he's huge on doing dyno work. I mean, literally unbelievable. Larry developed back in the, the late 90s. I remember when the computers were coming out, he developed the Pipe Max program. I think it's a version 4.1 now. So there's a lot of different versions. He also had ET Analyst, ET Pro, a bunch of software. And his, his website is maxsoftware.com. Check it out. So I'm going to download some of those programs. I just got finally got a new computer system out here at Drag Boss Garage because I had so many issues with the internet when I was doing live chats. It just was like a big anxiety issue for me. So now that that's solved, I can get back on schedule. But Larry Moe said, hey, let's, let, let me tell you something about these cylinder heads. I flowed them in October of 89 and he, st and he sent me the flow sheets. And you'll see this here, his original worksheets are two separate flow sheets, we'll say. 
and then he combined them into one in the, one of the following slides. So you can look at that data. It's hard to decipher some of it. Guys at Port Heads may get it more than I do. He explains some of the things and I point out some of the numbers on the slides. So pay attention to the slides. But he said, here's what we're gonna do, Tim. And I said, okay, Larry, what are we gonna do? He said, I'm gonna tell you how much horsepower that engine made. Because if you remember on the video that I made with about Bob Glidden, and there's a link up here, that engine was supposed to make about 975 out of 337 cubic inches at 9,800 RPM. Now, we won't get into that. There's a whole disclaimer that I'll put on here in the beginning of this slideshow that you can refer to in regards to how fast the dynos run 300 versus 600. You know, all the different conditions that can make dynos different. But I will tell you what Larry Moe told me about his dyno. He said he can dyno an engine and he will tell you exactly what that car will run at one of the local tracks and bring it right down and he will be within, I want to say he said like 500s or something. You know, something that crazy. He can predict it. His dyno is that accurate with the research that he's done and the data he has collected over the years. So it's, it's amazing. So he flowed those cylinder heads in 1989. What he did was he took those flow numbers along with the intake manifold and evaluated that. And you'll see his intake manifold here. He actually has that. So there's a lot of changes between the one on the 1979 car currently and this one. A lot of epoxy work. The block that he had, he didn't comment on the block, but Glidden used a 340X block. Now, one of the things you're going to see in here is some Dick Laney Pro Stock parts. Just to kind of give you an idea of what other guys were thinking. You know, the 59 degree angle, I'm pretty sure, for Mopar small block is not the best they say for high RPM. I don't know that. I'm telling you that the engine that you saw there in the video that I featured that made over 900 horsepower, that thing was making power at 9,800. The valve train was stable, that shaft system. I don't know much about it. What Dick Landy did was actually re-weld some of the lifter bores to be in 48 degrees, which I don't know if there's a Mopar R block or something that was the follow the X block that may have already had that incorporated. But you'll see some pictures of that. Some pictures of the ports and the intakes that Dick Lanny did. And I don't know if Bob and Dick did any work together. I heard that they did, I don't know for sure. But I wanted to put this video section in, this informational part, just because there's so much data to review. And I, and I myself don't even understand the data 100%. But what we're gonna find out is that Bob Glidden, and we're talking with the weight, I think he used a weight of 2369 to give a little bit of leeway. But that engine was making like 802 horsepower out of his 337 cubic inch. So when you run the numbers, and you'll see what they come out. The ET in the mile an hour don't jive. And we'll kind of leave it at that. Remember, the faster you go, the more weight you gotta carry in pounds per cubic inch. I even threw a little chart in there that you can refer to. I'm gonna start off with the first few races of the 1979 season, starting off with the Winter Nationals. And you'll see, pay attention to the ETs and the car, how it leaves. I think he raced Dino Don and ended up blowing a freeze plug or something. Halfway down the track, you'll see him shooting water out. But, you know, people didn't know that. I've never heard that before. I read it somewhere, I can't remember where. But, what we've done is extrapolate this data that he has, like I said, for the cylinder heads, the intakes, the engine that he had, and we put it into that analyzer. And we're coming up with numbers that you won't believe, including what cams that he needed to make how much power at what RPM. The ET, including all the variables taken in, including altitude and longitude and every other tude you can think of, it is in pipe max. It is an extensive program, so it's one of those things when you buy it, you might get lost in it. I will also say in regards to this video, at the end of the video, is a whole magazine section I got from a guy on Yellow Bullet, Big Black Ford. So I appreciate you hooking me up with that. Thank you so much.
but he gave me the actual magazine and a couple other magazines that have the article that you're gonna see at the end of the video. Take your time and read the slides because you can read it on a phone or a computer. And it tells you the exact steps of Bob Glidden's pro stock build. It says in there that just for him to get his heads ready to go was 24 hours of welding cast iron. And that's one of the things that Bob Glidden could do is weld cast iron. And not a lot of racers could do that. So you got to give props to him for that. And the story was written by Paul Genitalozzi. So he even built the oil pickup and oil pan on Bob's car. So take time to read that. So 24 hours just to start to rough port the heads, it says. Doesn't say final. And study these pictures. You'll see the combustion chambers are all welded in on these cylinder heads when you compare it to a stock W2 cylinder head. So let's watch Bob race. Listen to what he says in the comments. Pay attention to his ETs in mile an hour. Hey, there he goes now. Drag racing. A man and his wife, along with their two sons, have dominated a segment of the sport so effectively it staggers the imagination. Bob and Etta Glidden today hold so many records, it's difficult to list them all. Off in the run we're about to see Nicholson, 51 years of age, in the far lane. Bob Glidden is in the near lane. Glidden winning 33 out of 35, and it's a good start with Nicholson getting out first, but here comes Glidden halfway, and at the top end, and it's Glidden pulling it away. Bob Glidden continues his remarkable success in pro stock competition as he beats back the challenge of 51-year-old Don Nicholson. Bob Glidden and Joe Satmary. And remember, Satmary was the last man to beat Bob Glidden. He did it in May of 1978, and Glidden has not lost a race since that time. Satmary will be running in the far lane. Bob Glidden will be running in the near lane, and they are in the staging area. Bob Glidden, the Pro Stock champion, his 21st career victory. Only Don Prudhomme has more. Wife out of the crew chief, sons Billy and Rusty on the crew, and he's the champion. Well, I look for the track to be better today, really, for us than yesterday. Uh, the, the rain certainly isn't going to hurt it any, and uh, the cooler air is going to keep the rubber from balling up so bad, so I think it's going to be better. Here's an example of pro stock weight brakes. The Mopar 340 had 6.7 to 6.8 pounds per cubic inch. Always great to see pictures under the hood of the car and also to see Etta working on the 79 Plymouth Arrow. Arrow that you saw running, these are the heads from that and these are the original flow numbers from Larry Moe. Another set of Glidden's pro stock heads on the top compared to the original Chrysler heads. Look at the combustion chambers, how much they're welded up. These are a picture of Landy's Pro Stock heads, just to kind of give you an idea of what went into these heads to get them to flow and run the numbers that they did. The man that won the Winter Nationals with this, his brand new car, the Plymouth Arrow, is Bob Wood. And having his work cut out for him is Mark Ewell from Reno, Nevada. Finishing number eight in the world last year. No match for Bob Glidden last season. How will he do this year? Glidden carrying the big number one of the reigning world champion. Quite a story about Glidden. He retired a Ford that he campaigned last season that was never defeated. Came out with a brand new car, brand new combination, and won his first race. And he is in the finals of this Gator Nationals Championship. 8.48 seconds, his speed 150 miles an hour. Do you know what the national record is? Uh, it is 8.49 as far as I know. Well, it's not now, it's 8.48. That's what you just run, a brand new NHRA national record for pro stock. That's great. I, we've been having a lot of trouble here getting hooked up to the track, and that's really great. You had the shootout earlier. You sandbagging a little bit, maybe not showing everything you have? No, uh, not really, no. I mean, uh, the shoot came out early, but it didn't affect the ET of the run any. I was definitely trying to get 
the lane choice by low ED. No, that did not affect the run in any way. Big shout out to Larry Moe of Moe Racing Heads. This is his intake that Bob Glidden had ported and welded up. This came on an engine that he had bought. There was a Glidden 337 small block Mopar engine. This is the tunnel ram from it. He had the heads and he ported them. And these are the numbers that were basing the figures that we're going to talk about from that cylinder heads. I love how that says Bob used these intake stock. And this is the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator, and this is the number one car, Bob Glidden from Whiteland, Indiana. Glidden's competition, the team of Sox and Martin, a name practically synonymous with full-bodied stock car type drag racing. Sox and Martin coming out of the super stock ranks a few years ago. At one point in his career back in 1971, Ronnie Sox won six of eight national events. But he's against the best in the world right now, and he tried a whole shot and it failed as he left a red light on the starting line. Your winner, the seventh straight national event, Bob with 8.53 seconds, his speed 147 miles an hour, and back on the starting line. That tells the whole story. Here in instant replay, you see just how early Ronnie Sox left the starting line. With the big number one on his window signifying a world championship last year, Bob Glidden proves that yes, indeed, the rest of the pro stockers were right. They were racing for second place. Ronnie Sox took a gamble on the line. It was his only alternative. He read lights, and here comes Bob Gooden. You've got them shaking their heads constantly. He waves to Ronnie Sox as he goes by. Ronnie gives him a big grin and a wave back. So it's an all Chrysler Corporation final, and that hasn't happened since like 1972. Can I get him in here? If he gets over here in a hurry, yeah, we've got funny cars coming down. Yes, sir. You know, that's your 22nd NHRA National win. Uh, it's each win is a great win. This, this has been a great race for you. Come on over here. Two good friends and uh, kind of on the same team, really, as far as uh, the factory is concerned. We're on the same team until it comes on the racetrack, Doc. We're not on the same team anymore. How do you go from us to win as bad as I do? Well, congratulations to both of you. And Ronnie Sox, you've won a lot of national event wins in the past. And uh, you're going to have trouble with this guy before the season's over. Uh, I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> okay, Bob Glidden, still oh. number one. Bob entered the Cajun Nationals with additional weight added to that arrow and is the number one qualifier once again. Your win streak is uninterrupted, even though you totally change equipment. How can you possibly be so consistent? Well, we have a lot of uh, years of experience in pro stock racing. We have a, quite a facility back in Indiana, and I have uh, my wife, my kids. Uh, it's a family operation. Uh, I think this has helped us a lot in learning and knowing more about our car and what we do. Six or seven years ago, you're a line mechanic at an automobile dealership. You make up your mind to go pro racing. It must have been quite a decision for a family man. Yeah, indeed it was. We had to make the decision uh, as to whether we wanted to try to race. Uh, and back in those days, that was a bad word to a lot of people. But we had to uh, make our mind up as to whether we were going to race for a living or work our normal job and have a check at the end of the week. You know, you see a lot of wives and kids helping out with the race car, putting air in the tires maybe, or pouring the fuel in the tank. Not so with, uh, with your family. They're uh, really involved mechanically. Well, a lot of families are getting more involved in drag racing today. But our family has been involved in this for 10, 12 years. Uh, Etta, this is really all she knows. She lives, eats, sleeps this drag racing because it is our profession and we try to do our best at it. When the race is over, who takes everything apart? Well, uh, rarely do I take an engine apart. Uh, Edda or Billy or the two of them will always remove and disassemble the parts. The engine, uh, whatever, transmissions, rear ends, and uh, uh, my main concern is how they go together and what goes together. Six years ago, did you ever think you'd be on your way to uh, becoming really a postdoc millionaire? You're close to that million dollar mark. We, fortunately, we are close. No, uh, six, seven years ago, we were concerned about going to a race and qualify, not how much money we were going to win. If you were to quit right now, what do you think it would say? Well, I am sure at this point, drag racing is like any other profession. As you do it and do it and do it, and live it and eat it, you would think you would like to stop and do something else. The grass always looks greener on the other side.
But I think after a couple of months or three or four months, it would look different. I think she would like to go back to it. Well, you're uh, famous now for these quick changes in equipment from one brand to another. Uh, what do we anticipate in the future here? Well, I don't think uh, we'll make any major changes. We might uh, go back to another car for one race sometime during the year, but I think we'll stick with the Chrysler. And this Cajun Nationals could be the ninth consecutive NHRA National event victory for Bob Glidden, a record uh, I don't think will ever be matched. While Etta Glidden does a tremendous amount of work in the pits and in the shop at home, she also has an important function to perform on the starting line. Helping out with Bob in the burnouts, orienting Bob on the racetrack, keeping tabs of the car prior to it leaving the starting line, making sure there's nothing leaking from underneath the car. Etta Glidden concentrates on that Christmas tree just as hard as her husband, Bob. In the first round of racing at the Cajun Nationals, Jim Kinnett of Lilburn, Georgia, drew the honor of racing against the number one qualifier. He red-lighted away his chance for the win, and Etta Glidden showing the reaction of joy in her face. As husband Bob takes another first-round win, the red light left at the starting line. Etta Glidden heads back to the pits for more work. Bob Glidden, moving into the semifinals, we met him earlier, has absolutely dominated pro stock racing for the past two years. In the semi-final round, it is the national record holder, Randy Humphrey, against the former record holder, Bob Glidden, carrying the big number one on the side of his car, indicating that he won the world championship title in pro stock last season. The Plymouth Valari against the Plymouth Arrow. Glidden with a slight lead at the middle of the track. He extends it at the finish line. Glidden winning over Humphrey 8.61 seconds to a losing 8.66. Here's how close it was. In the last stages of preparation of their Plymouth Arrow for the final round of Pro Stock Eliminator is Bob and Etta Glidden. Steve Evans is with them. If you ask the other Pro Stock drivers why Bob and Etta Glidden are number one in this business, they'll all tell you the same thing. They just flat work harder than everybody else. Glidden, do you ever stop working Etta? Not very often. <laughs> I mean, at home, at the races, it never ends. No, it never ends. I noticed you were packing the parachute. That's kind of the ultimate tribute a husband can give a wife, isn't it? Yeah, that's, I'm responsible for him stopping at the other end. What else are you responsible for here preparing for this final round? Anything that needs to be done. It's kind of a mutual thing. He handles the major mechanical chores and then any other thing that needs to be done that I handle. Bob, how's it look for this final round? Well, it's going to be a close race. Uh, I think Lee went a 66, is that right? And uh, we went 61, so uh, it's going to be who, whoever gets out first will most likely win the race. Pro Stock Eliminator Finals. The classic Chevrolet versus Plymouth battle. This is the Camaro of Rare and Morrison of Arlington, Texas, driven by Lee Shepard. Lee Shepard has been in the finals four times at the Cajun Nationals, dating back to 1976 when he won Pro Stock Eliminator. His competition, the number one car, Bob Glidden in the Plymouth Arrow. This marks the third consecutive year he's been in the finals of Pro Stock. He won in 1977 and in 1978. In 77, Lee Shepard won Modified Eliminator right here on this same racetrack. Last year he was runner-up to Bob Glidden. He's trying this year for the upset of the meet. But it looks like Bob Glidden is stretching his lead. And the finish line, Bob Glidden takes the win his ninth consecutive national title, and for the 16th consecutive race in a row, Bob Glidden appears in the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator at an NHRA national event. Let's go again to Steve Evans with Bob Glidden in the winner's circle. No man has ever done it before. I doubt any will ever do it again. Your ninth straight NHRA national event. That's great, Steve. It appears that if anybody's gonna beat Bob Glidden, it'll have to be you. You'll have to make a mistake. Well, uh, this race was really close. I don't know what we went, what the numbers were on the final, but... Uh, 8.59. What was uh, Shepard? I don't know. 148.49, you're in. Yes, but in the semis, uh, he went within 400 of us. So, uh, you know, the, this was a close race. And just recently, they added weight to this car, NHRA. It took some weight off the other cars, and you're still in the winner's circle. I know you were frustrated by that, but it must feel good now. Uh, it feel, always feels good to win, but... Uh, it, it feels good to win. Are you going to stay with the Plymouth? You talked about maybe going back to the Ford. Ed and I will we'll have to discuss that 
next week and uh, make her mind up. I don't know her yet. It's always Etta. She really is your teammate. Well, she's not really the teammate. Uh, she sees more of what goes on yeah. than I do. You know, I'm in the car. I'm going down the racetrack. And uh, she really has a better handle on what we should or shouldn't do. So uh, I have to uh, consult with her no matter what. These are 340X blocks, Mopar's foundation for pro stock effort. Look at the block right there in the left upper corner. That's actually from Landy. The bottom is from Glidden. Look how the lifter bores have been corrupted to be 48 degrees. Big horsepower there, just like these intakes. Both of these are Glidden's. Look at the work that's been done to them. These are the actual worksheets that you've seen before that Larry Moe did. I just put these together to make it easier to read one sheet of paper. Here's the actual workup of the flow numbers, including interpooled numbers for higher lift. There is a ton of information on these head flow sheets, so make sure you look this over. Larry Moe gave me this to kind of explain how some people's dynos read different horsepower levels. There's lots of variables. Now the next slide shows all the input data, including engine data, intake data, and exhaust data. Don't forget to review this too. Lots of information here. Read the footnotes too. This slide has all the fuel and frictional data. The next slide shows the horsepower numbers and the camshafts that you need to make that horsepower. Now these next sheets show the pipe max program on the header fabrication, including all the harmonics. Again, a wealth of information to review. So Larry Moe put all the data into his programs, his Pipe Max Dyno program, and came up with 802 horsepower at 9,200 and 500 foot-pounds of torque from 75 to 7,900. Now, I don't think this is his Dyno program, but it kind of shows flywheel to wheel horsepower and the change between the two. You can kind of use this to compare. Now, the next slide coming up is going to show you the ET Pro in regards to all the quarter-mile times Everything you can think about a run, it's in here. So pay attention to this. You can get some great information from this. The next slide shows the degree of weather that's involved with figuring this out. Now I left this slide in here. This is one of his original slides he worked up. Kind of shows you some differences between mile an hour and ET. And here's his latest data. So Larry Moe used the head flow and other information that he had on the actual engine and also mile an hour times that were given by NHRA with a best Bob Glidden run of 843 at 162. And now we know that engine made about 800 to 802 horsepower, give or take, depending on the bore and other specs. Now here's a complete rundown on a build that Bob provided popular hot rodding back in 1980. Lots of information there and lots of details. So stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage where you're always seeing and learning something new.